An administrator in the Kalamazoo Public School District, Dr. Jackson Dyson was part of the contemporary Christian singing group known as the Jackson Family, signed with Command Records and was distributed by Word and Epic. The DeBarge Family even sang a song called Hand in Hand on the same album. Welcome to the stage, McCole Dyson! That opportunity that has come and gone or maybe the call that you never answered or followed up on. Let me propose to you today that everyone within their own current capacity has opportunities to lead. That's right, wherever you are, right now you can and should lead. After all, everyone follows someone Are you still keeping up with the Kardashians or maybe you fo are following on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube or TikTok or even Pinterest? There's nothing wrong with following, but I'm challenging you today to lead. Looks as if the slide isn't moving. I'm challenging you today to lead. So you wanna be mindful that if you think you're leading and no one is following, you're just going for a walk. So if you think you're leading, no one's following, you're just going for a walk. Just like if you think you are teaching and no one is learning, then you're just talking. I just threw that in for those that are in education. So remember leadership evokes followship. So when you lead, you should have those who follow. So you might be wondering, why me? Why me? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you were called. That's right. Matthew 22, 14 says, many are called, few are chosen. So a passage like that can be understood when you understand the role that idiom plays in language. So let me say it another way. When we speak idiomatically, we don't speak literally. An example of this would be if I said to uh, look up a word in the dictionary. Now you might say, well, I do. I have to look up to get the dictionary out of the shelf. But when you go to actually look that word up, are you looking up or down? That's correct. You'd be looking down to look at the word, even though I've asked you to look up a word in the dictionary. So a non-native might look and wonder why we speak that way and even respond. Uh, and we would just probably say, that's just the way we say things. So just like that, in the passage, many are called, few are chosen, it's to say, it, it's idiomatic. So for the first century Palestinian Aramaic, all and not all is many and few. So many are called, few are chosen, really means all are called, not all are choice. The question becomes not about the former, but the latter. If we know that many are called, why are only a few chosen or not all choice? The answer is simple. Because you didn't answer the call. Reclaiming your role as a leader is to become one of the choice. The call has been made to everyone. So say yes. Stop letting your own fears and your fixed mindsets hinder you from accepting the call. Don't let the fact that it's never been done before permeate and overtake you where you're now unwilling to be innovative and creative. You keep making excuses. I know because I've done the same thing. You say, I'm tired. I got too much on my plate already. I've never done that before. Or I'm not sure what you want me to do. Or my favorite one, it's just not the right time. When is the right time? I want to tell you two things I'm sure of when it comes to time. As long as you are alive, you have time. That's correct. As long as there's life and breath in you, you get to decide what you're going to do with your time. Here's the second thing I know about time. That time keeps ticking and life moves on whether you do anything different or not. So think about it. Where are you now? What's your current role? Are you a board member? Are you an administrative assistant? Maybe you're a teacher's aide. 
or stay home mom. Maybe you're in between jobs. Reclaim your role as a leader. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna offer you a three-step process. And I actually grabbed this prescription from uh, Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. First step, you ready? Write the vision. Helen Keller said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. Do you have a vision? But having the vision is not enough, according to Habakkuk. It must be articulated in writing. So you've been given the vision or you've had the thought or the seed. You see it the way it can be. Write it down. You see a better way of how the principal could run the school or you know a better way to promote a new business that you were thinking about starting over 20 years ago when you had the idea of the seed first planted? Write the vision. You ready for step two? Step two, make it plain. If the vision is not clear to you, then it won't be clear to those who follow. Francis Bacon believed that reading caused you to be full or full of knowledge and speaking made you ready and writing made you precise or exact. So the best process of writing is how to say it. The vision must be made plain so that those following will be able to see where you're going. Make it plain. You with me? We're at the last step. Step one was write the vision. Two, make it plain. Here's step three. Live by faith. Having taken these steps, you position yourself to live and through and out of the space where you have been called to lead. That step three is the just shall live by faith. So you've been given a vision followed by the call to make it plain. It's not a vision about belief. It's a vision of action to live by faith. I challenge you to begin leading now. Now is the appointed time. No more excuses. You were asked because they saw something in you. They asked you. They saw something in you. Don't doubt yourself. Don't look at what is. That's not vision. That's sight. You must see what others don't see. That's vision. And walk it out. It takes courage. It takes you daring to lead, as Brene Brown suggests. I'm telling you that you can no longer wait to reclaim leadership. Write the vision. Make it plain. Live by faith.